Creating and maintaining huge database is difficult without following standards. In this video, I will give you a brief overview of IPC, IEEE and IEC standards for electronic symbol design. Apart from that, you will get to know how to create sequential and functional symbol from scratch. So let's get started. We will start with a symbol of step down transformer. Let's see the first option which is a rectangular block with 5 pins connected on it. And second option is a block which has windings and shows mutual coupling between them. Now tell me which option looks more like a transformer. Obviously the second one. So here you can ask as a design engineer, how do we know which symbol is correct or not? And for that reason there are industry standards from IPC, IEEE and IEC. Many organizations and industries adhere to widely accepted standards for schematic symbol creation. And these are, first one is IPC 2612, second is IEC 60617, third is IEEE forward slash ANSI 315. I got a very useful 5 minute read from Ultra Librarian website, which will give you brief about all the three standards. So you can look into it, I'll put link in the description. Now I'm going to give you a quick demo of creating a IPC compliant symbol in ORCAD Capture CIS. So let's open ORCAD Capture. First step is we're going to create a new library. For that, click over File, New and left click over Library tab. Alright, so new library is created. Another step is we're going to create new part. But before that, we're going to save it. So for that, we have to select the library, right click and click over Save As. So we have created a new library. Now next step is we have to create a new part inside the library. So for that select the library, right click. Here you have to click over new part. Now it is going to ask for name of a new part. Let's say we are managing 5000 symbols. To manage this many symbols, we need to follow some naming convention. So this naming convention can vary organization to organization. In my case, I'm going to follow few standard, for example, on this sheet, I have mentioned for ICs, I am going to follow the naming IC underscore manufacturer part number. Similarly for crystal, I will follow XTAL underscore frequency then part number. Alright. Now similarly, I am following these naming conventions and for different components, diode, fuse, filters, ferrite beads plus here you can see all type of connectors that can possible and I have used throughout the designs. So I'm going to share this Excel sheet. You can download it from the description. Now let's go back to our design. And here, as you can see, we are going to design a symbol for Atmega 328P, which is an integrated chip, right? So it will be IC underscore manufacturing part number of the chip, which will be Atmega 328P hyphen AUR. Next is part reference prefix for chip or for ICs we, we use U as per IPC standard and here you will see couple of options. So in our case it is only package. So all other values will be default values. Now let's click over OK. So as you can see our new part is created here. Now we have to place pins. If we're going to place all the pins one by one, that will be a waste of time. We're going to use a shortcut here, which is place pin array. So we'll just click over this one. All right. So here we have to fill few details. First is starting name. So first pin will be one. So its name will be one. Later we'll change all the names. I'll show you how. Number of pins. So on each side of the chip, we're going to create eight pins. So that will be 8, pin spacing will be 1, shape will be line, for now we'll just leave it passive, later we'll change all together, I'll show you, and pin increment will be 1. Now let's click over OK. So as you can see we have created 8 pins by one click. Now let's increase this area, alright, now we're going to create another 8 pins for this side. So again, we'll cl click over place pin array. So as you can see, it's already detected. It, it needs to start from ninth pin. 
so we have to just click over ok button and till now we have created 9 to 16 now we have to create another 8 pins now for that here we have to follow a trick let's see what will happen if we we'll follow the same procedure and as you can see the orientation of pins are not correct so after 16 we are getting a pin which will be 24 then at the last pin which should be 24 but it is 17 so this is kind of order is not correct right so now to correct it we have to follow a trick i'm just going to remove this i'll show you how just again click over place pin array now here we have to start with 24 all right number of pins will be 8 pin spacing will be 1 but instead of increment we'll go for decrement which will be minus 1 and click over ok so now you can see we have created a correct pin order similarly we'll follow the same procedure for pin number 25 to 32 so again we'll click over here again we'll make it 32 minus 1 ok so till now we have placed all the pins sequentially now next step is we have to assign name to each of these pins for that using a data sheet of at mega 328p i have created a excel and inside this excel i am using following columns first one is pin number second is pin name after that i am also mentioning all the types of the pin like which one is bidirectional which one is input and output which one is power and then I am using pin groups. I will explain that later what is the purpose of this pin group. And another is pin type. So it is basically line or you are using a clock pin or any short pins you wanted to place instead of longer pins. Now where to place all this information or all these columns in ORCAD capture. So for that you have to first select all the pins together or click over edit pins. So when you click over edit pins you'll get this sort of spreadsheet and there you can put all these details. So in our case, just make sure all the pin orders are correct. So for example, if you'll see in this pin number, because if you remember, we have used a trick instead of using the increment, we have reduced the pin order by minus one. So that's why pin number is not in order so for that you have to just click over this one and put it in increasing order so now you can see it is fine it is ready to place all the columns from excel to orcat capture so let's open our excel sheet we'll start with putting the names so firstly i'm going to select all the names up to 32 pins control c go back to orcat capture just select first name and control V. So as you can see, we have placed all the names here. Now the next step is, we have to put pin group. So the purpose of pin group is, it is basically as its name suggests, we will use this to sort all the pins. Let's suppose all the first group pins will be together. So there's another type of schematic symbol, which we call functional symbol. So I'll tell you how to create a functional symbol and on that we're going to use pin group. So for now, I'll, I'll just going to copy it and later I'll explain. So control C, go back to ARCAD capture, pin group, control V. Now we're going to copy. Okay, so this is already selected line. Now here we're going to copy pin type which one is bi-directional, which one is power. So that information I've already noted down from the data sheet. We'll just go there and select all the 32 pins. Go back to capture and control V. All right. Now click over apply and OK. So till now we have placed all the names for each pin and we have defined the type of pin. Now the next step is we have to align all these properly. So for that first step is you have to enable the grid. All right. And as you can see, 
as our cursor is moving, we are following a 0.1 unit grid, right, in X and Y both direction. So I'm just going to adjust those pins quickly. And if you want, you can also count how many. So if you zoom in a lot, you can count the grid. So you can make sure it should be symmetric in both direction. Okay, so till now we have placed all the pins correctly. Now the next step is we have to place a rectangle. So for that, you can click here and select the rectangle and place it quickly. So our symbol is kind of ready. Now the next step is we have to put all the parameters. For placing all the parameters, you have to open the part properties and here the first thing you'll find value. So for IC generally we use manufacturing part number in value section. So here I'll mention at mega 328p hyphen aur. All right, I'll copy it. Now I'll create couple of more parameters. So first one is manufacturing part number. And here I'll mention the same at mega328p hyphen aur. Okay. And similarly, I'll create few more parameters which are useful. So for a particular part or particular schematic symbol, we can have multiple alternate part numbers. So these are all the details which are very useful when we export BOM and uh, go for the procurement of all the components. So till here, we have seen a first method of creating a symbol as per IPC standard. Now this is a sequential symbol where we have placed all the pins in a sequence like from 1 to 32. Another is functional symbol. So functional symbol will be the group of pins. For example, all the grounds will be together. All the power pins will be together. Here we are using three ports, port D, port B and port C. So we can place all these ports together instead of placing here and there. For creating a functional symbol, we'll again select the library, right click. And now this time we'll click over new part from spreadsheet. We'll click over this one and here we'll get the same kind of spreadsheet, but at the beginning of creating a symbol. So here it is asking for part name. All right. And I'm going to put all the details from the Excel sheet. So I'm just going to do it quickly. All right. So now what we'll do, we'll just double click here. So as you can see, pin is kind of arranged in form of group. So fifth group is all the power pins. Fourth group is all the grounds. And third group is, if we'll extend it, we'll see it is port B and similarly port C and D. All right. Now the next step is we have to define the position. So for example, I just want all the power pins and ground left side. So I'm just going to select left here quickly. And for all the ports, I want to place those at the right side. So I'll select right for all of these. So till now we have selected all the positions. Now the next step is click over save and continue. All right, let's open the functional block. Let me increase this. All right, so as you can see, we have arranged, these are all the power pins, all right. This type of symbol is functional schematic symbol. For more tutorials, visit us at resources.emaeda.com and don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel.